All right, uh, so you guys found your way to Drush 12 Modernized. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for getting to Pittsburgh and getting to our talk. Um, the two of us put a lot of work into Drush 12, um, along with lots of contributors, um, and we're excited to tell you about it. Um, my name is Moshe Weitzman. I'm an independent web developer, uh, primarily working for Tag1 as a consultant there. Whoops. And uh, this is my colleague, Greg Anderson, a senior lead engineer. Engineering manager. Engineering manager. Senior it's engineering all the same manager. Thing. They, they call me Mangineer. <laughs> Mangineer at Pantheon. Um, okay. So the first group of changes that I want to talk about have to do with authoring Drush commands. Um, so hopefully uh, many of you have written your own Drush commands. It's um, a rather easy thing to do, I think. Um, and uh, you know they're good for you, and they they're sort of self-documenting, and they're really easy for other people on the team to use uh, because of this self-documenting feature. Um, So um, the first thing to say about Drush 12 is that uh, it only runs with the newest version of Drupal, Drupal 10. Um, so you'll want to adopt this when you start running Drupal 10 sites. Um, or if you are already, then great. Um, this is a good time to adopt Drush 12. Um, since uh, Drupal 10 is PHP 8.1 and higher, um, that's what Drush is also. And we really... Um, you know, embraced that restriction and updated all of our code to be squeaky clean using all of the newest features of PHP. And, you know, that really helps us find, you know, bugs related to types that are changing. Um, it helps us communicate uh, what is extensible and what is not, uh, and so forth. Um, so the biggest change for authoring is that we encourage the use of PHP 8 attributes instead of annotations. Um, so I'll give you an example of the way Drush commands used to be uh, and the way they are in Drupal uh, Drush 12. Right here, Let's see if making it bigger is helpful. Um, right now we're looking at the annotations way of authoring commands. So you can see right here this at command and then the command name xkcd fetch. Um, it takes one parameter, uh, two options, two usage examples, and an alias. Uh, and below that, you have the actual method, which takes a bunch of parameters and it does some stuff. Um, when you upgrade to Drush 12, um, optionally, you can start using attributes. Um, you know, it's encouraged, but in fact, uh, we wanted to have a nod to backward compatibility. So all of the existing commands that are out there are going to run fine on Drush 12. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so here's the new way to upgrade at your leisure. Um, if these look alien to you, um, that's okay. I think they look alien to everyone when you first look at this stuff, um, but you kind of get used to it. Um, the nice thing about PHP 8 attributes is that they're an actual language construct. Um, so it, there's much better performance for using them. There's much better support for autocomplete and in your IDE for authoring these kinds of attributes. Um, annotations, on the other hand, are like completely separate from PHP. Um, so uh, the command attribute right here, um, you can see that the name is um, one named parameter and aliases are specified here. Okay. Um, the argument, the two options, the two usage examples, most of this stuff is just one for one. Um, Remember, this was the annotation example. Most of these one for one um, get transformed into PHP attributes. 
As for the method name and the method body, um, there's no required changes there. Um, you can pretty much keep what you had. Um, so uh, going back to the presentation here, um, final strict types, command name constant, typed properties, return types, parameter types. Let's take a look at that. Um, what we have here, um, let's make this bigger, even much bigger. How do I do that? So um, this class here is called user commands. If we look at the top of the class, um, we're declaring strict types, okay, which helps avoid um, type changes for variables. Um, this is true of all of the Drush internals are using that. All of our command files are declared as final, which means that you can't extend them directly, or at least you have to do a little bit more work to do so with the reflection API. Um, and so we're kind of communicating that uh, our command files are not an API unto themselves. Um, usually with Drush commands, you have like a service that does the actual work of the command. That's the API. But the command definition itself is not an API. So that's why these classes are final. Yes, people have tried. People have tried. Um, one uh, other nice change we made for our commands, encourage that for your commands, is that there's now class constants for each of the command names. Um, so when you're writing scripts and you need to do Drush commands inside your scripts, um, you can use these constants and you won't make a typo. Um, and you can tell kind of what's using what um, by linking back to this constant. Um, so um, here's a quick um, look at a new feature. Greg's going to talk about this one later. But um, there's a new create method, and this is one of them, a static create method, uh, where you can set up your dependencies for your command file. And just want to mention that um, for a while now, Drush has shipped with a generator called Drupal command file, DCF. And if you run Drush generate DCF, it can give you a skeleton command file. And uh, that will help you get like your final um, into your class statement. It will help you s with some boilerplate um, that's all updated for Drush 12. So that really is the sort of best practice for how you create, it. you start creating your own custom command is to run our DCF generator. All right, so in addition to commands, um, Drush has a lot of generators. Um, remember, generators are uh, the thing that generates boilerplate for you. If you're creating new Drupal services, you're creating new blocks, you're creating new access control plugins, like all these kinds of things, you can get a kickstart by using the Drush generate command. Um, in addition to all the generators that ship with Drush, uh, there's the possibility of having custom generators. And so the custom generator API has changed a bit. Um, we upgraded to version three of the Drupal code generator. The Drupal code generator is a separate open source project that we wrap inside of Drush, and that's what provides all the generators. Um, so the net net is you have to slightly alter your generators for this new version of Drush. Um, here's what a new generator looks like. Uh, this is, in fact, the Drush command file generator that I just mentioned a minute ago. Um, this also uses PHP, at, PHP attributes. Here we have the generator attribute. And the generator attribute takes a bunch of name parameters, name description, alias, and so forth and so on. Um, this class-based generator is new. Um, in Drush 12, so you'll want to extend that class. And uh, this interviewer object is new as well. 
Um, the inter interviewer is like a, a name that I think is fantastic. I didn't name it. But um, the maintainer of this Drupal code generator did. And the point of the interviewer is to ask the user a bunch of questions before the code gets generated. Um, and so you can see that he's building an IR variable. That's the interviewer. And then the interviewer asks what machine name the class should get, um, what class name, and uh, what services should get injected in. And then it's a matter of using the twig file that has shipped with this generator and uh, writing to this path the result of all the variables in the twig file. Um, so that's generators. Um, hopefully you'll find them even a little bit easier to use um, in Drush 12 with this new setup and happily using um, PHP and attributes. Okay, I'm handing off to Greg. All right, so I'm just gonna go over what it looks like a little bit more on uh, creating command files for Drush 12. As most mentioned, we have a complete backwards compatibility layer, so you shouldn't have to change your commands at all. The layout for a Drush command is the same as it was before. There's a well-known location inside your module Drush commands, where you put your command definition, and uh, Drush is just going to find it there. You will notice that the Drush services YAML file is gone. It doesn't have to be gone. If it's still there, we have the backwards compatibility layer that will load it, um, but you can run without it now. And in addition to module command discovery, we also have a new PSR4 discovery mechanism. So any library that you add to Drupal through Composer is going to have an autoload section in its Composer JSON file. And basically what Drush does is it uses this information from Composer, walks through all of the autoloader sections, and if it finds this well-known path, Drush commands, then it takes the base namespace from the beginning of your autoloader, you can see they're underlined in red, and then on the right, underlined in red, your namespaces, whatever was in the autoload section, followed by Drush commands, and similarly, wherever you tell the autoloader to put your source, the source file is similarly located in Drush commands. And um, the other thing to notice about this mechanism is there's really no way to do a Drush services YAML type thing. There's no good place to put the YAML. We could have a well-known file in there perhaps, but we didn't do that. Um, instead, and Moshe has already given you a, a preview of this, we switched to a static create factory method. And this is the same pattern you're already familiar with in Drupal if you've ever made a form or a controller. So basically what happens is when Drush is instantiating your class object, it notices that the static create method is there and it just passes it the Drupal DI container and you can pull whatever services you want out of that to pass it into your constructor. Following good practice, make your constructor public, I mean protected, so that nobody instantiates it unless they're going through the factory. So porting from Drush services YAML to a static create factory is actually pretty easy. These things look quite a bit different, but if you open up your Drush services YAML, the first thing you're gonna notice is it's full of all of these service names. And I've got a couple of them underlined in red here, the config manager and the config storage export. So when you write your static create, um, you can just use that same name, just drop the at, call container get, pass it on in, your constructor. Um, and then I'm going to back up one slide. Uh, you'll notice that that second underlined example from your Drush services YAML has a little question mark in it after the at sign, and that means that this is an optional thing. The service doesn't have to be there, and it might be null. Now, in practice, if people have set up their services file like this, it's possible if you call that method, it's going to blow up because strict type checking and etc. So um, 
the obvious solution is you just ask the container, does it have the service? If it does, then you call through. Um, much more readable, very PHP-like. Drush also had a mechanism called inflection, and maybe a lot of you in this room don't know what that is because um, it was sort of niche, but the short version of inflection is it's something you inherit when you extend the Drush commands class, and basically inflection involves a marker interface that provides a set method, and uh, if your class has this, then Drush is gonna notice that that marker interface is there, and it'll do injection automatically during creation time. Um, we're deprecating this. We really find that the static create is clearer. Uh, for now, most of the inflection classes still work if you're using them, but we just completely removed the really uh, unusual ones that aren't really used anywhere outside of core. So that's one thing you might encounter when uh, upgrading commands. Um, is because the, there's, there's no BC layer for the removed stuff. Installation and execution. Uh, for a really long time, we've been encouraging everyone to say, hey, there's only one supported installation method, and that's through Composer. But for Dresh 9 and 10 and 11, it just happened to work if you globally installed Drush through a number of different means, and it would just sort of figure out what to do, and it would even merge together the two autoload files if it really had to. Not great, because things can very easily catch fire. So um, we're formally de-supporting that. A lot of the Drush bootstrap code has gotten way simpler. Uh, all of that code is going away, and Drush 12 now requires that it be installed in the same site, uh, in the same vendor as the Drupal site that it's going to bootstrap. It won't bootstrap any other site except for itself. The vendor's always there, um, and it's always shared. Uh, the upshot of this is that the root option is now vestigial. You can pass dash dash root to Drush 12, and it'll pretty much just ignore it unless you pass a different root, in which case you'll get an error. Um, but we, again, wanted to have that backwards compatibility in case you were using Drush 11 on one machine to remotely call Drush 12 on the other machine, you might still have that root method there. But you don't have to type it in yourself any longer. If you just run Drush out of the vendor directory, then you're gonna bootstrap whatever site that's there. So that's really a lot more simple. Uh, so the result of this is that the launcher isn't really necessary. Uh, we changed the internals of how Drush starts up commands now. We, we're taking advantage of some of the new uh, variables that Composer provides to find the bin directory and little things like that. Uh, the launcher doesn't do these things, which could lead to some strange uh, edge cases. Uh, so we recently just uh, de-supported the current version of launcher. Um, maybe someone might resuscitate that in the future, but it's not really necessary. Um, something that's worked for a long time is if you just add a relative path to the end of your uh, bash or other shell path variable, to, to vendor bin, then you can just call Drush as Drush, and if your current working directory is at the, the base of a Drupal project, your shell's gonna find it there. Uh, it's, it's just already a bash feature, so why have a wrapper if the bash, if, if the, the shell has that feature is sort of our um, policy. And, and similarly, if you only have one Drush on your system, you could just put the full path to vendor bin Drush in your path, and uh, then you wouldn't even have to change the working directory because Drush always finds the Drupal that it's uh, paired with regardless of what your current working directory is. There's a lot of different ways to manage navigating through your directories. I've just thrown up a couple here. Um, I have a little shell alias called fd, which is probably my most used shell alias. Um, it just gives you a way, instead of doing a cd to change the directory, you can do an fd to find a directory, and just the same way that your terminal will search a path for executables, 
the FD path will search a, a, a list of locations where you might have projects installed. And uh, this project also has a little startup FD install that will give you a suggestion of, of places where you can find your projects. Um, and it supports type uh, tab completion, so it's a fast way to navigate between different Drupal projects or any other sort of project. Um, it's bash only. Um, and there's another thing out there in the open source universe called ZSHZ, uh, which is a little program that just remembers which directories you CD to a lot, and then it, it sort of hints and says, oh, maybe you want to go back to some place you've been before. Um, so, so by using things like this and other bash utilities, that we, we don't need to overload Drush with all of these things that are already uh, features of other, other programs. That leads to better maintainability. Site aliases are still around. Um, we're really encouraging people to think of site aliases as just being other environments of the site you're working on. So keep your alias checked into your Git repository in the site that you're working on, uh, preferably inside of the uh, self.site.yaml file. But regardless of that recommendation, other sorts of aliases are still supported, so you can have aliases that point out to all of your different sites wherever they happen to be hosted. Um, if you run an alias, though, the dash dash root option isn't passed anymore. Uh, Drush 11 can still figure out where the site is without a root, uh, so this is okay-ish. Um, and uh, vendor bin is assumed, I mean, People don't relocate your vendor bin directory, right? Don't do that. But I if you do, <laughs> Drush is assuming that you're consistent in where you relocate it to. Um, and you know, as far as aliases are concerned, we're really finding that the community is moving towards wrappers like you know DDEV or Terminus or BLT. People aren't using Drush aliases as much. They just call some terminal, uh, so some wrapper that will SSH on over to the final place and then get you to Drush. So um, I don't know that we're necessarily going to remove aliases in the future uh, from Drush, but um, maybe if there was some other program that was like the launcher that also had aliases, then Core wouldn't need to Core Drush wouldn't need to have it. All right, I'm going to pass back. Okay. Um, in addition to, you know, helpful tweaks to lots of our existing commands that um, you guys are happily running, uh, we did add a bunch of new commands um, in Drush 12, and I'm going to talk a little bit about new commands that were added to Drush 11 since folks may have missed that during this uh, never-ending pandemic that we went through. Um, so the YAML edit commands are brand new in 12. Um, there's a wonderful open source project called YAML Edit um, by uh, Drupal developer Matt Grasmick. Um, and we decided to just bring, on, bring in those Symfony commands um, via Composer. And so now you can run um, the YAML commands that are listed here and a couple more. Um, the main benefit of the YAML Edit commands is if you are writing a script that has to do YAML stuff, um, you need to change a key, change a value, remove a couple keys, um, lint a YAML file. Um, you don't kind of have to figure out um, the sed in order to do that. Um, you can just use these um, easy commands to do so. Uh, so encourage you guys to reach for this tool when you're doing uh, YAML stuff at the command line. The entity commands um, are also present in 11. Um, I want to highlight them. The entity save command is pretty helpful. Um, I use it when I'm developing something. Uh, let's say I am developing you know, a save uh, operation in Drupal. Um, that can be like the insert and update hooks for nodes. Um, and I just need to like save a node over and over again to make sure that my 
code is running and it's doing its thing correctly on every node save. Um, you can just quickly run drush entity save, give it an actual entity type and entity ID, in this case, node 12. Um, and the command line will just save that entity and your hooks will fire. You can um, keep working on your code and making it better and making sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Entity delete is useful once in a while. You can delete all content uh, with a given entity or just a given bundle from that entity. Uh, this is really useful. Uh, I've used it with PM uninstall. You can't uninstall certain um, entity type modules if their content is still around. Um, Drupal's validators will say, you're about to orphan your data. That's usually not what you want to do. Uh, so uninstall denied. Um, so this entity delete is a way to get rid of data that you don't need um, and that will let the validator proceed with uninstall. So um, encourage folks to use the entity commands. The archive commands are pretty new. Well, they're in a new um, iteration. They existed in older versions of Drush. Uh, they went away for a while and now they're back. So what archive dump does is that it um, creates a tarball of your whole site. And your whole site meaning the code, the files, and the database. Um, and so that's useful if you want to make a quick backup or a snapshot for some reason. Um, people use it also when you're switching hosting providers. Um, the hosting providers kind of know what to do with one of these tarballs and they um, you know, untar it and commit stuff to Git and you're on a new provider. Um, so the new iteration of the archive commands uh, understands how we now build Drupal sites using Composer. Um, and so it archives the com composer.json and composer.lock um, along with uh, the database and the files and the code. And so you're able to then run composer install on the other side uh, and you have your code base again. Uh, we added uh, three, three commands in the field definition category. This is useful when you want to kind of introspect your Drupal site and you want to know, hey, what fields am I running on this site? Um, which, fidget, which widgets and which formatters am I running on this site? Um, these three commands are there. They'll let you know. They provide a nice table of information. Um, where you can uh, get the information you need. The maintenance commands um, were, re were recently added um, to solve kind of an interesting problem that people have been seeing um, on their Drupal sites, and maybe you guys have seen it and been perplexed about it like I was. Um, basically, during deployments, what I was seeing was that once in a while I do a prod deployment and like the cache had no idea what fields I was running and the deployment would fail. Um, and now prod is like in maintenance mode and it won't work and it's a whole, you know, race, race to fix things. Um, and so what looks like was happening is that the cron job was running every two minutes or five minutes, however you set it up, during the deployment. And so the caches were getting populated while Drupal was in a state that it didn't, you know, it wasn't possible to know what was installed and what wasn't. And so this last command I have written in here, drush mate status and drush cron, is an excellent way to avoid this problem. So the mate status command will fail if maintenance mode is on. Okay, so the first thing that you are supposed to do in a deployment is turn maintenance mode on. Um, and with this as your cron statement, you will never get to the second half, drush cron, if you're in maintenance mode. And once your site's out of maintenance mode, it's safe to run drush cron, and this will run perfectly fine. So um, hooray for mate status, and hooray for this dump or double ampersand that requires a success on the left-hand side before the right-hand side will work. Uh, so once you guys upgrade to 12, um, encourage you to change your cron statement to something like this.
Okay, so a few more things um, to share with you guys that we've done recently. Um, the www.drush.org website um, is always getting better and better. Um, recently, we now have release specific documentation. So if you're running Drush 11 or you're running Drush 12, you can look at the docs that are specific to your version and you'll see you know, exactly what you can and can't do and how it works. Um, we expanded what's available there to include all of the commands that are core to Drush and all of the generators that are core to Drush. The commands are listed along with their arguments and options and so forth. Um, in addition to regular command options, the global options are listed there. Um, so you don't have to run a special um, Drush docs clo core global options in order to see those and learn about them. Um, and finally, the Drush topic command, just want to remind folks, that's a way to read the documentation that we've all authored uh, right at the command line. So let me just show you the website. So release specific documentation right here. Um, so I said you can look at the 12 docs. Um, you can look at the 11 docs right here um, and you'll see exactly the information that pertains to you. Um, the listing of commands is over here. Here we can look at a particular command. Um, here's the cron command that we were just talking about. And in fact, here's the example that we were just talking about. Um, this command doesn't actually have um, arguments or options. Um, so you go right into the global options. Um, and these are like the most common global options that you need to know about. So they're listed here. Um, and um, any topics that are relevant for your command are listed here along with the aliases and just want to call attention to the legend that's at the bottom of each of these command pages. This will tell you how to interpret what you're seeing above with options and what it means if they have square brackets or don't have square brackets and so forth. Um, so that's the command listing. And you know it's kind of nice to have a, a URL for each command that you can share and you can you know ask for help and say, here's um, what the command help is. Can you help me run this command and make the docs better? Um, so similarly, all of the generators are now getting their own page on our doc site. Okay, so um, Drupal 9 added bundle classes if you guys aren't using those, those are super cool. Um, you can generate a bundle class uh, right here using this generator. Um, if folks haven't used the search feature on this site, the search feature is fantastic. Um, you know, it comes up immediately. There's nine matching documents. Um, you can learn all you wanted to know about cron stuff uh, and Drush, for example. This website um, is a static website that gets generated by something called MKDocs and material for MKDocs. Um, if you guys are working on documentation-related websites, I would highly recommend that system. Um, you just write markdown files, and they make it into an excellent documentation website. I referenced the um, Drush topic command. Kind of want to whoops, show you guys what that is. Try to do that here. Can you see? That's still kind of small. So 
So I ran the command drush topic inside my Drupal site. And here you get 18 different choices that you can pick. Um, these are like all the markdown files that the community maintains around Drush and how each part of our system works. Um, so if you're a pure command line person, you have this option for reading the docs. If you're a web browser person, feel free to read them on the web. It's the same markdown files, just made pretty for the web. Okay, so the next topic is shell completion. Um, we took advantage of some advancements in Symfony console in the latest version of console, which is uh, version six. Uh, they have integrated completion. So if you configure your shell correctly, um, you don't have to type out um, argument names fully or option names fully. You can say like drush core and then it will let it will give you the option of running core cron or core edit or the different things in that category. Um, so uh, folks are encouraged to enhance their shells um, so you don't have to type that stuff out and option names can be long sometimes so um, it's a nice time saver. Uh, the mechanism is documented in uh, the installation page so go take a look at that. Um, on the web and you'll see how to um, configure each of these three shells, bash, ZSH, or fish. Um, you know, this feature is largely inherited from Symfony console, so if you have experience with other console CLIs, Drush configures the same as those do. Um, completion on argument names is a little bit more complicated. Um, uh, argument values rather so um, we support some of those now and if folks want to get more arguments to be supported feel free to support uh, to submit a pull request on that we um, noticed that the composer team added a great new feature in composer 2.2 yes um, and uh, there's now a composer audit command and audit will look at all of your dependencies and it will tell you which ones you're behind on from a security perspective. So which ones have outstanding SAs and you need to take care of those A ASAP. So that was formerly, uh, formerly the responsibility of Drush PM security PHP. We offered the same service, um, looking at the same data set that composer does. Um, there's no need for the two tools to exist, so we've dumped ours in Drush 12, use Composer Audit instead. We kept a command that we've had for a while called PM colon security, and that one specifically looks at your contrib modules and tells you which ones have essays against them and you're too far behind. Um, if and when uh, the community gets the essays for contrib modules into the corpus that Composer Audit looks at, then we will have no need for this command and we'll deprecate it. And Composer Audit will be the one tool you need. Uh, but for now, you need them both in order to assure that your PHP is up to date. Okay, so... Um, that's the end of the formal slides part of the presentation. Um, I'd love to open up the floor for whatever's on your mind. Uh, let's have a conversation about Drush. Um, and then we've got a special treat at the end. Go ahead, right here in the, in the front. Um, I mean, yeah, that security PHP that we just talked about is gone. Um, how many minutes left is that? Okay, 10. Um, all right, uh, I can't think of other commands that are gone. Um, when we deprecate a command, we actually keep it around just for the sake of telling you what to do instead of 
the current command. So just run what you're used to, and if it doesn't work, we'll tell you what to do otherwise. You're welcome. Right over here. Sure. All right, thanks. Up in front. Um, we are using Drupal's API for deleting the entity. So we do an entity load um, and we entity delete. Um, I'm trying to remember now, I don't think there's any multiple handling in Drupal for deletion, so you actually have to delete them one by one. You load them many at a time, um, but you delete them one by one. Now, you asked about batch handling. I think there is batch handling, so um, we'll load up 50 of them, we'll de delete one by one, and then we'll load up 50 more, and we will delete. Um, so yeah, I think there is some batch handling. You know the command line doesn't tend to do as much batching as, um, as the web does. So I think it all runs in one process still. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can still restore it. It's not going to run, but the, you'll get the code. Oh, well, I mean, it, it, it's going to use the Dresh SQL commands to load the database. If your database server is running, you'll get the database. Yeah. Yeah, so the question was about archive restore, um, just in case people didn't hear the question. And can I run that on a site that isn't functional, right? Like a non-bootstrapping site. And you can. Um, you'll have to make it functional after um, everything is restored, but you can. Right here. Oh, yeah. oh, I haven't thought about this connection. I was wondering why Drupal might make things different or not thought about this. Is, was, is there a command, or have you thought about this command specifically for running like one-time transformation? I can't like fit basically. I guess it's like, it's like, like I want to fit all, all these nodes to certain pipes and then Right. Yeah, so the question was, is there um, any thought to making a command that uh, will take a bunch of entities and transform them in some way? Um, Yeah, so this, that's certainly one good way to do it, is you can run a, write a Dresh command or a Dresh script um, that will load up all the entities and do the transformation that you want. Um, you can certainly write like a hook implementation of insert and update um, temporarily or forever, whatever you need, and then run the entity save command or just run it through all of those. Um, so I think that would work too. Cool. In the middle, yeah. Yeah, so the question was, um, is there a way to export all of the config related to a feature, I think? Um, and that's not part of Core Drush. I think that people have tried stuff like that. 
Um, the features module sounds like it's like that. Um, and there's like the config community has quite a lot of innovation there. Um, so I would look to config devel and config manager and like I can't even keep track of all of the different synonyms for config commands. But um, I would look to that stuff. I think that's sort of a little bit outside of the purview of Cordrush, so um, we haven't quite gone there. Three minutes, okay, yeah. All right, so um, I just wanna thank everyone for coming and hope we can have a little celebration here as I tag the 12.0.0 release right here at the end of our session. This is all it is. If you thought there was more to it. Uh, and then this magical button gives some content. I will go through and make these even better um, than what happened here. Oh my gosh. Uh-oh. Somebody converted a lot of commands. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's continue and I'll keep refining the, um, this is no longer a pre-release, this is the real release, it's the latest release. It, now it's published. All right, everyone, great talking to you. We'll see you in the hallway.